Hello and welcome to a brand new Motion 5 tutorial. I know this has been a long time coming, but I just wanted to make sure I was in a suitable or knowledgeable enough position that I had something to share with you guys about Motion and to be able to back up my claims as well. So this is what we're going to be creating today. It's not a new effect per se, but what I wanted to do was take a simple effect and use it as an opportunity to explain some of the differences between Motion's... Um, keyframing and behaviors because they are two fundamentally different techniques uh, or features as it were that are built into motion 5 so let's just go ahead and get started by creating a new project so this is obviously a, a uh, handwriting drawing on effect which uses both motion and behaviors to create the finished effect so let's go ahead press file new from project browser and choose new motion project. Okay, so we've got a blank canvas here, as it were, which basically means there's nothing in the timeline, no layers, no files loaded into this project, and as you can see, our viewer is empty. So the first thing we want to do is create some text. So to do that, we click on the text tool here, and we're just going to type in Dan Allen. As you saw in the previous one, it said Dan Allen Films, but to speed up this tutorial, we're just going to type in Dan Allen. To adjust this text, what we want to do is go into the inspector. Just like in Final Cut Pro 10, there's an inspector panel. This time it's up here in the left-hand corner. And within here, you'll notice some familiar uh, tool sets. So we've got text, filters, behaviors, and properties. These are four different controls that correspond to this layer in the timeline. Uh, to the actual text itself, is obviously under the text tab. And then under there, we have file, format, style, and layout. What we want to do is just make sure that our font is set correctly and everything's the right size and color. For now, we're going to leave the font black. We're going to play around with how it looks afterwards because what we want to do at the moment is just focus on the animation. Everything looks fine there. What I'm going to do though is bump up the uh, scale of the text. So to do that, we go into format and we change the size. About there looks good. If we swap over to the select tool, we can drag this and the yellow guides will let us know when it's in the middle. The next thing we want to do is use the draw tool. So this is the paint stroke tool. You can access it by pressing P. And what we're going to do is cre uh, basically trace the text, but it's we want to be a little bit smarter than that. What we don't want to do is just make sure everything's covered. What we want to do is think about how you would actually write on these letters. And you can't take your pen off the paper. It's like one of them cool challenges. So we're just going to trace the D around here because I start off with my D's creating the circle. And then, then I would draw this line thing down from the top. Then I'd start my A's from here. And I'd go around this way, up, and then I'd come back down for the tail. And then i go up for the end, back down, and up and around and still don't take your pen off the paper or your finger off the mouse as it were and we want to trace up the A down the A and swirl round and dash it then we're going to draw these L's down it doesn't matter if you re-go over what you've already typed in by the way um, what you've already drawn over by the way because uh, It'll already be there, and this will make more sense once you've seen how this technique works. Then we start the E's here, we go round them, and swish, and then do the end the same. That's why I didn't want to do films, because what you don't want to do is waste five minutes of your time watching me trace stuff. And let go. Bam. Isn't that gorgeous? And, and that's it, we're done. That's how you create the... I'm joking. Okay, so what we want to do now is set up this paint stroke as a mat for, or a mask is the um, terminology in motion for the text layer. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is go into the timeline, right click on the text and press add image mask. Command shift M is the shortcut. Then we can grab our paint stroke and drag it into the image mask. This does two things. This sets up in the image mask, if we click on that and make sure the inspector is showing, it basically has now set a source for the mask, which basically means use this layer as the mask source. 
it's also disabled the paint stroke so we can't see it. We can enable it and we get, we might want to in a minute just to make sure everything's covered. But for the time being you can still edit it whilst it's um, hidden. The tick basically means whether it's hidden, closed. So with it hidden but selected we're going to go into the inspector panel and you can see that there are two sliders at the bottom of the shape and style page and this is the last point offset and what that basically means is how does it draw on in fact just to uh, show you what it's going to do let's hide the text and bring on the paint stroke and if we grab this slider down you can see that it writes it on so if you understand where I'm going with this a mask will evidently tell the text to only show up where this layer is white so when as this is drawn on it's slowly going to reveal the text in the uh, motion that we created using the paint tool so let's start it off at zero press this plus button to add a keyframe let's go to the end of our project and add another keyframe and move it up to the end now we play back you can see it plays in just like that so let's hide the paint strokes show Dan Allen and let's see how this is looking okay not too bad but we really uh, need to make sure that all this image is showing there's a few nicks in the actual trace that we've done so what we can do is actually increase this uh, the size of the paint stroke so you can see we've got a width width slider here well, you don't want to increase this too much because if you increase this too much it's basically going to start drawing letters that we haven't got onto yet so about there looks nice And depending on how much time you spend on the trace around, that's what's going to give you the best result. Okay, so that is keyframe animation. We know that because we use this keyframe button to create some animation. We're now going to create some animation without using keyframes, just by using behaviors. And what we're going to affect with this is the camera. So first of all, let's create a little bit of a scene. Let's bring in a background from Finder. We're just going to grab in a paper texture and you can drag it right into your timeline. supposedly and here you go we've now got this paper texture in here let's press command minus to zoom out make sure that the uh, select tool is selected and then we can scale this like so hold down shift to make a uniform scale and let's grab uh, let's rename this group we're going to call this bg for background and let's rename this group the text. Basically, whenever you create something in Motion 5, it genuinely creates a group. And we want to grab the background group and move it below. We'll grab this one, the text, and move it above. Make sure that the background layer starts at zero as well. You can just grab this. Next thing we want to do is make sure that the text is a suitable color for this paper texture background. So let's collapse the text group, select the text layer, and under style we can change the color. Let's go for like a, a blue, so it's sort of like a blue ink. That looks nice. Now we can create a camera. To do this we just press on this camera button over here on the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to click on this button here and press switch to 3D. This is going to allow us to move around these objects as if they're in 3D space, which they now technically are. Then what we want to do is add some behavior to the camera. Rather than using keyframes, we're just going to tell it what to do. So if we go into this clockwork button here on the right hand side. You can also access these under the library tab on the left hand corner. We can choose camera dolly. This is going to add a dolly behavior to the camera. So if we click on the dolly, over in the inspector on camera and behaviors, we can just basically tell Motion 5 
how much we want to zoom in by. We don't have to set keyframes, we don't have to define start and end points, it's basically just going to create an animation for the duration. Obviously if you want more control and you want to be a bit fanciful, then keyframes come in handy. But a lot of the time, people aren't after this direct relationship with the numbers and the exact movement and scale. We just want to give it some basic animation, in which case behaviors are very handy. So we can just grab this slider and tell it how much we're going to zoom in by. And then if we play back, bam, it's now zooming in, perhaps a bit much. Oh God, oh God. But we didn't do anything but adjust the slider. So let's just be a bit more sensible. Like that, there we go. What we also can do is change very simply how it's gonna work. So you can choose to ease in, which is my favorite one to do. So this is gonna start off pretty static. And then over the course of time, it's gonna slowly pick up a little bit of speed until it gets to a constant duration towards the end. Basically like an exponential. And there we have it. We've created some writing on text. We've discussed the difference between keyframes and behaviors and how we can use behaviors to quickly achieve a certain look and how we can also use keyframes to get a more dynamic look. For instance, we could add some more keyframes to the paint stroke so that there's a bigger pause between the typing Dan and Alan. The way we would do that if we go into paint strokes, wait until it finishes writing Dan, which is there. Go into shape, add a keyframe, just clock the time. In fact, we can copy that, add a keyframe, scroll over to here, can add another keyframe and then paste that number back in, which apparently we didn't copy. So it was about 42.8. So now it's going to write in down, it's going to stop, and then it's going to write in. If you wanted to say make sure that the text had finished up earlier what we can do is we can go into the keyframe editor which is in the bottom right hand corner and then we can now graphically see the keyframes for this layer we can actually select these keyframes you can hold down shift to select multiple ones and move them over it's going to keep the unselected ones exactly where they are let's just move it to here like that so now when we play back, you can see that Dan's going to finish here. Supposedly. And then it will finish writing the text when it gets to here. What we can do is grab these keyframes, move them down, like that. And there you go. That's the sort of added uh, control that you get with keyframes versus the simple establishing of some kind of movement or evolution through behavior. So hopefully this was useful. If you want to see more Motion 5 tutorials, I'm going to go into some more advanced stuff. This is just a quick uh, basic tutorial to get you guys started and discuss the difference between behaviors and keyframes. I've said that about five times. Jesus. Sorry. Never take the Lord's name in vain, children. See you guys soon. Dan Alan films and whatnot.